Today on January 25th, we celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, who was Saul before. So it's the conversion of Saul when he stops persecuting Christians and he, he sees the light, he encounters Jesus personally, and then he becomes a follower of Christ and the, one of the, probably the greatest evangelist of the church in all time. And so how does that happen? You know, I think of conversion as something that is, you know, personal, but that it, it becomes this thing for him that, that is poured out. And so that all the, all the people around the Roman Empire, people know from east to west, everything, you know, they know more about Jesus because of St. Paul. Well, today we hear that story of his conversion, of how he's going along the way to Damascus, and he's, he's going so that he can continue to persecute the church, to continue to bring people back in chains to Jerusalem who are followers of the way of Christianity. And he is, and he is blinded by a light along the way, and it's Jesus' voice that says to him, why are you persecuting me? Who is he persecuting? Jesus says, it is me. And, but he's persecuting those people who are part of the church. And so Jesus' Jesus's body is the church. We are the body of Christ as the church. And so Saul's conversion to becoming Paul and everything, it's, it's actually a conversion to a service of the church as well as a service of Jesus. Not just something personal that he has now, a personal relationship with Jesus, but now he's a servant of the church. And he goes out and he continues to evangelize for the good of the church. So too it should be for us, you know, and, and there's a lot of things in our lives that might need to be converted. I know that's definitely true for me and that I continually have things that are brought before my eyes that, that tell me that has to go too. And I think one of the scariest things in life we can do is really ask God to help to show us where, our, where we need to change, where we need to be converted, because there might be things that we're rather kind of fond of or we kind of glory in them, you know. Um, maybe it's that I'm, I really love, you know, trying to make things perfect. I want, to, I want things to be the perfect way. And, and that can be good to an extent, but then I can get overly zealous in that. And then nothing's ever good enough. Or I, I chastise other people because they don't look as perfect as me or they, the standard I have for myself, I, I put onto other people. But when we offer them to God, he will make something beautiful out of them. Like what he does for St. Paul. You know, and, and what we can do as well is, is as long as we know what the basic truth is. Because what Paul found out on the way was not that he was a bad person, but rather that he is a child of God, that he is brothers with Jesus. And that is where we, we have to start to do any of this work of conversion, of, of, of continuing conversion in our own hearts is to recognize that God wants what's best for us. And so when we can really trust that and trust him, his conversion is always what is best for us. The conversion of heart that he will give us is what is best for us. But we have to continually be honest and willing to put ourselves forth. So like St. Paul today, let's ask the Lord for a conversion of heart and to show us today what he wants to work on so that we might be more and more converted. This is a lifelong process. We can be more and more converted to Christ each and every day, and so to serve the church.